On the 29th of March, 1827, Franz Peter Schubert was a torchbearer at the funeral of Beethoven. Schubert himself had less than 20 months to live, but musically, they were to be the richest in his life. Beethoven had been the lodestar, and Schubert had already asked the question, who, after Beethoven, may dare to do anything? In the few despairing months that remained to him, Schubert would find his own answers to that question and make his own final statements. He would emerge from Beethoven's shadow and recognize that he himself had become Beethoven's heir. But Schubert was to die at the age of 31, although not before he had found his final voice. A cycle of experience that had begun in intimate lyricism ended with dramatic grandeur of vision. The inscription on Schubert's tombstone by his friend Franz Grillparzer reads, Music has here buried great riches, but far fairer hopes. And so began the myth that Schubert never achieved complete maturity. The origins of the myth are not far to seek. Schubert was undervalued in his lifetime, and for at least a century more, because he died young, and for all the appreciation of his intimate circle of friends, he failed to achieve public recognition. He was the first great composer in Western music to live by his art alone, without patronage, and he enjoyed only one public concert of his music in the whole of his life. The very nature of Schubert's unique voice made it difficult for the world to understand him or to label him particularly since his last and greatest music lacks the optimism of his predecessor, Beethoven. For Schubert, at the end of his life, salvation is unattainable. There is no bitterness, but unlike Beethoven, he does not sing of the fullness of the earth. Instead, he laments for our mortality. But there are worse things that can happen to an artist than to die young. Schubert had achieved what he set out to do. 
He had not only inherited Beethoven's mantle, he knew that in his last works he had carried the language of music forward into uncharted territory. He had sought to achieve what he called the highest in art, which he described as the true understanding of music and personal, individual sorrow. In that he succeeded in his last days with a startling maturity of vision that is different in tone and temper from what he had done before. Who would dare to attempt anything after Beethoven? The answer was already there. <laughs> 